So good morning, everybody. I am so excited today. We are prepping to start uh, our first holy day of of this year, and I'm so excited. Um, tonight is the beginning of the Feast of Passover, and as millions of people get ready to partake in Easter celebrations and, and egg hunts and chocolate bunnies and all of this other garbage, um, we opt to meet today on the Passover, um, which is not only found in Scripture, but um, it's the pinnacle of our faith as believers in Messiah. And sadly, a lot of people are being robbed of that um, very important meeting day that Yahweh set up from the beginning with his people to meet with them and to to uh, to celebrate with them and and to memorialize with them and you know the bottom line is the creator set up these feasts as a way for us to meet with him okay um, it's not uh, well you know, whatever. Anyways, as we dig into our Hebrew roots, we find so many connections between the Old and the New Testaments that bring our faith full circle. They really help us appreciate the depth of what Messiah did for us. Okay, so the story of Passover is in the book of Exodus. Um, Yahweh rained 10 plagues on the Egyptians, bloody water, frogs, lice, flies, uh, death of livestock, boils, hail and fire, locust and darkness, uh, but by far the worst was the death of the firstborns. Um, so I just want to read this passage to you, and then I'm just going to kind of uh, tie this in with our with our New Testament and what Messiah did for us in becoming our Passover lamb. So anyways, on that same night I will pass through Egypt, and I will strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am Yahweh. The blood will be a sign for you and on all your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate throughout your generations. That means forever, people. Throughout your generations. Always. This is always. Um, you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh. So today we are having a major feast at my house. And anybody and everybody is welcome to come to my home and feast with us and celebrate with us for being passed over. Okay. So, um, you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh, as a lasting ordinance. That means forever, once again. For seven days you are to eat bread without yeast. On the first day, remove all the yeast from your houses, which we did this morning. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it, from the first day through the seventh day, they're going to be cut off from Israel. Those are big words, and Christians do this every year. They cut themselves off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly, and another on the seventh day. Do not do any work on these days except to, part, except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread, because it was on that very day that I brought you uh, that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Uh, celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance throughout your generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your houses. And anyone, whether foreigner or native born, who eats anything with yeast in it must be cut off from the community of Israel. Eat nothing made of yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. So not only are we commanded to not eat yeast, we are directly commanded to, to consume unleavened bread for seven days of the Passover. Okay, that's why it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's just supposed to eat it every day. 
Okay. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some on the top and both sides of your door frame. None of you shall go out of your door, uh, out of your house until morning. When Yahweh goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and side of your door frames and will pass over the door. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter into your house and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter that land that Yahweh will give you, as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to Yahweh. Folks, this is not a Jewish feast. This is Yahweh's feast. Okay? Who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did what Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, Yahweh struck down all the firstborns in Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the Egyptians got up during the night and there was loud wailing in Egypt for there was not a house without someone dead. That is in Exodus 12, 12 through 30, if you want to go and read that. So I find the connection of blood over our doorposts interesting because now as believers, our entire homes are now covered in the blood of Yeshua. So a lot of people will tell you that these are Jewish holidays, but that is not true. Scripture clearly states that this is the Passover of Yahweh. These are feast days that Yahweh commanded Okay, these are not made up Jewish traditions, although the Jews have made up a lot of traditions that they do within the Passover. Um, I don't understand the whole Seder thing, and quite honestly, I don't need to understand it. It's a tradition. It's not found in Scripture, so I'm not really worried about it. I don't care if people do it, but I don't do it. I just don't. So, um, you know, it, it's the, the instructions for the Passover are also found in the book of Exodus, and, and you can do the Passover, okay? But I just want to go over a few things to, to help you understand what the requirements of the Passover are as well. So, um, so these feast days in Exodus are, are, are Yahweh's feasts in Exodus 12.11, 12.14, 13.6, 32.5. 5. They are all referred to as the feast of Yahweh or a feast to Yahweh. They are not Jewish feasts, okay? So you have to get that out of your mind if you're going to come into any kind of understanding. These are not Jewish holidays. These are Yahweh's feast days, his appointed time to meet with his people. And if you are claiming to be his people, then you should be meeting with him and not Astarte a week from now. Okay? That's very important that you understand that. Okay, so the feast days are also referred to as Yahweh's feast in Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy as well. And the feast days belong to Yahweh and are given to his people, Israel. Yahweh's only people are referred to as Israel, Judah, and Ephraim. Okay? But they are all one nation of people who are to be in covenant with the Most High for all of our days. Okay? If you're not in one of these camps, then you are considered the everyone else. Okay? And I know that's hard for a lot of you to hear because a lot of you really believe that that you're Yahweh's people and that, you know, you believe in Jesus and you're good. You're his people. But, you you know, it, 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 it requires more than belief. You have to believe so much that your belief causes a, re a response on your part. You have to be obedient. You have to do what Yahweh wants you to do. And one of those things is his Passover. Okay, so um, it's important to remember that there was always a way 
there was always a way made for anybody who wants to become part of Israel to change your citizen, uh, citizenship from everyone else to Israel. Okay, there was always a way. So the Passover reminds us of that every year. Uh, in the Old Testament, we were referred to as I'm sorry that I'm slurring a lot today. I've, I've been in the middle of cluster headaches, so I've been having to take a lot of migraine medication this last week, and it does kind of start to mess with my speech and my comprehension just a little bit. So bear with me, okay? Um, so in the Old Testament, we were referred to as strangers. We were referred to as sojourners. And uh, the very first place that we're offered a chance to become part of Israel is in Exodus 12, 48 and 49. And when a stranger dwells with you and wants to keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all of his males be circumcised. Folks, you have to be part of the covenant to partake in the Passover. That's the only requirement. You have to be in covenant with him because this is a special day set apart for his special people. Okay? And and I know that a lot of grown men don't want to hear that, but that's the truth of the matter. You have to be in covenant in order to partake of the of the Passover. Okay? So however you deal with that with Yahweh is is up to you. But this scripture very clearly states that if you want to take part in the Passover, which is, a, which is a sign that you are in covenant with him, then you have to be circumcised. And I don't care what Paul says in Galatians and all of that. I, I don't care. This is what Yahweh says. Okay? So if Paul's words are contradicting my creator, Paul's got to go. See ya. You know, but the reality is, it, if you learn a little bit more about who Paul was talking to and what the context was of what was going on at that time, then you will understand that you still have to be circumcised. Sorry. <laughs> I know that stings a little bit, but okay. So moving on, um, it says that, uh, and then let them come near and they can keep it. And he shall be as the native of the land. Did you get that? So if you circumcise yourself and become part of the covenant you are now part of israel you have decided to change your citizenship okay one law shall be for the native born and for the stranger who dwells among you one torah is for you and the israelite and the yehudite and the ephraimite okay one law there is not this this uh unbiblical law of Christ there there is no law of Christ Christ was the law he was the Torah you know so you keep making excuses and and you're gonna be that one standing in front of uh, Yeshua on the day saying Lord Lord did we not prophesy and cast out demons in your name and he's gonna tell you to go away because you never knew him and he never knew you you didn't come into covenant with him. No matter how much you say you love a person, if you don't show that you love that person, it's just words. Folks, it's just words. All these people running around thinking they don't have to do anything and it's it's just crazy to me. See, this is why the Torah teaches us how to love because that's our idea of love. I'm just going to say I love somebody and I'm not going to do anything to show them that I love them. I'm not going to do any of the things that they asked me to do. I'm not going to do any of the things that I know that they like, but I'm going to say that I love them and we'll be good. This is why we need a Torah to show us what love is. Every one of those commandments shows us how to either love God or love each other. Because we're humans and we have our own idea of what love is. And quite honestly, some of us have a really warped idea of what love is. That's why we have a Torah. So we don't have to make it up as we go along. We have instructions. Okay, I'm getting off topic. Anyway, so it's crucial to understand that there is no us and them. We are all Israel and Elohim told us that there is only one Torah. Keeping the Passover and all the feast days unto the Lord are commandments of God. 
from the creator himself, not Paul. Paul is not the creator. Paul is not the Messiah. Paul is nobody. Especially when he starts contradicting the entire Bible. You need to understand that. Anyways, these are commandments from God himself. These are the appointed times set in place to meet with him. He created them, not the Jewish people. And the misconception that the Passover belongs to the Jews comes from John 2.13, which reads, Now the Passover of the Jews is at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Okay, this verse right here, if you don't read anything other than the New Testament, then you don't understand that the Passover is not of the Jews. It's not a Jewish holiday. They just happen to be the only people keeping it. It's a, it's a holy day from Yahweh. Okay, this is not a Jewish feast day, although the Jews were the only ones keeping it at that time. And the verse will move, uh, with that verse, we'll, we're going to move into the New Testament and show that the Messiah and his disciples kept the, the Passover. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yeshua, saying to him, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did what Yeshua had directed them and they prepared the Passover and that's in Matthew 26 17 19 it's important to note that Yeshua was actually according to these scriptures and the timeline he was killed on Passover even Paul is telling us to keep continuing uh, to continue keeping the feast in 1 Corinthians 5 7 he says therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened for indeed Yeshua our Passover Yeshua our Passover he died for us on Passover he was the, that's why they call him the Passover lamb He was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of the malice or wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The disciples continued keeping the feast days and uh, the meetings with Yahweh even after Yeshua was dead and everybody goes around saying, oh, they did away with the Torah. Well, that's all part of the Torah. So if they did away with the Torah, then why are they still keeping it? Why are they still meeting in, in synagogues on the Sabbath? Why are they still going to Jerusalem for the feasts and, and all of this stuff? Because they didn't do away with the Torah. God, you guys just don't want to listen to reason at all. And the reality is, Yeshua was your Passover lamb. He was, what he did for you makes it possible for you to come into covenant with Yahweh and keep covenant with Yahweh. And even when you make a mistake, you now have an advocate with the Father. You don't have to go out and find a dog, cat, goat, or whatever to, to sacrifice. Yeshua was your sacrifice. A lot of people will tell you that Yeshua put an end to the Torah. But right here we can see that he did not do that. He fulfilled it. He gave it meaning. He filled it up. He became our Passover lamb, and we need to honor his sacrifice for our wickedness. He is trying desperately to lead his people out of Egypt once again and into the freedom of his Torah. We see it happening all over the world right now. We see a remnant regathering. We see people coming back into Torah, and it's amazing, and it's a blessing. He is the blood on our doorpost, you guys. He is our atoning sacrifice. He is our Passover. And through him, we can cross over. We can change our citizen. And yes, we, we can change our citizenship. And yes, we can become Israel. Hallelujah. And can I please get an amen for that? Because this is amazing stuff, you guys. You're missing it. You are missing out on so much blessing from the Creator 
by just being so hard hearted. You guys are not hearkening to his voice. And there are people like me out here who are trying to show you that there is a better way to do this whole thing, you know? And, and I really hope and I pray on this Passover, I pray for all of these people of God to come out of her, my people, so that you not partake of her sins and of her judgments. You guys, I love you. I hope you have a blessed week. I really do. I, I intend to have a, a great week with my family. And um, I will talk to you soon, okay? Hag Hamasot.